Hey what up players, it's Warboss Tab in this mug. Welcome to my new and improved how to paint a salamander space marine. So since I lost the footage for the old one, thought I'd redo it. And uh, yeah, this is what we were able to get done by the end of the first part. So you're gonna need these paints. Wah flesh, warpstone green, Abaddon black, BL tan green. Raglan Flesh Shade, Known Oil, Lead Belcher, Balthazar Gold, Corn Red. And here's a little spin around of our model. Pretty good for uh, one guy. And uh, so let's begin. The first thing that I did was I primed my model after I built him up, I primed him in white. You'll notice that I am going to be using for the first color, instead of starting with a base color or foundation color and then highlighting up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix two colors together. The base color of, oh it's not Wah Flesh, it's actually Caliban Green. Caliban Green and Warp Stone Glow, we're going to mix those two together. I don't know why I didn't use Wah Flesh. I think Caliban Green is a little bit more of a uh, emerald green, darker emerald green, whereas Wah Flesh is a little bit more um, of a kind of flat green. It's not going to come out shiny and um, Dark Angel's green, Caliban Green, it's, it's dark and it's uh, very shiny. It just the, the look is going to be a little bit different. So. so I've got my wet palette over there in the back and we're mixing up Caliban Green and warpstone glow. The the goal is that we want to have an even distribution of paint. We don't want the paint to streak, we want it to have nice coverage, smooth coverage over the white primer. And uh, so what I'm doing is I'm putting some paint on the wet palette and I'm going and I'm getting the other paint and I'm making sure that I um, that I dipped my brush in water before I got to my second paint and now I'm just mixing it around. When you're mixing paint it's sometimes good to use a brush that you don't care about. Maybe an old brush, one where the tip started fraying and you're not going to be using for any detail work because believe me if you get any paint stuck and dried in the ferrule where the bristles meet the metal part then it's you're gonna have a bad time. It's gonna dry there and and that's what makes bristles fray apart and that's what makes your brush eventually unusable. So you want to use some maybe a, a different brush or if um, if what we're doing is we're just putting this paint on the model so uh, we're, we're not doing any detail work so you can use the same brush you use for mixing if it's your first color like this one is and you don't mind that it's probably gonna get everywhere. All you need to make sure uh, the only thing you need to make sure happens is that the paint spreads and does not streak and that you don't leave any unsightly uh, clumps or lumps of paint around the model. So nice and smooth brush strokes all the way across, making sure to turn the model at a bunch of different angles so that you can see it from above and from below. So like I always say, the worst thing is when you get a coat of paint on and then you're about to go to the next step or maybe you're even already in the next step and as you pick up the model to paint it you realize that when you turn it at a certain angle you've completely missed a bunch of areas. So this is for my uh, project first founding that I actually started a while ago some of you will remember that I started this project a couple years ago maybe and uh, the goal was to get all the way through the 18 founding legions in their current 40k color schemes and we've had some hiccups and stops and starts along the way but uh, I think that was just because I was I've been such a perfectionist when it comes to getting a model built right and looking right and converted the right way or like in the White Scars video series, uh, painted a certain way. And uh, I was so set on getting that 
that white of the white scar is perfectly the way that Games Workshop's Evy Metal team would do it. That I think, you know, it, it you, you don't have the same quality all the way across. Some of these guys are painted in such a manner that you can turn them out pretty quickly but still have a good finish to it. Other guys like the White Scars video, which turned into just a, a master class on how to paint white, which I pulled out of the White Dwarf, the old White Dwarf tutorial for how to paint Corsaro Khan, uh, just became uh, an exercise in patience and tedium. And <laughs> unfortunately, I, I, I think if I was a little bit more consistent, that would have probably helped. But I was so excited to just paint up all of these different chapters. And um, if you're ever in Hawaii at Other Realms, the game, gaming store and comic store, I uh, had given them last year before we moved to California, I had given them all of the Space Marines that I painted in, in that project first founding, including ones that I hadn't painted yet, which I did specifically because the moving deadline was coming up. Okay, so while I've been gabbing, the model had been painted and here we are we're jumping ahead in time what I did was I went back over same color I just mixed up more after the first coat had dried and I just went back over and you'll find that the second time you the second coat of paint that you put on the model if it's the same color it just enriches the colors it makes it so that the underlying color in this case white does not show through and it's generally a good idea to paint over if you have the time if, if you if you don't then you know this doesn't matter but um, you definitely want to try to get at least one or two extra paint coats on especially if you're doing a big model or a model where the the color scheme is predominantly one color in this case green you don't want to have just one coat that uh, does not cover exactly the way you want and I'm continuing to paint here. What I'm using is Abbott on black. I've got the two shoulder pads in black and I've also painted the little uh, panel or, um, or whatever you call that right behind the Space Marine's head because I found that uh, that adds a little bit of depth to the Space Marine figure when you're looking at it from the front. And now we're painting the shell casing or the, the casing of the bolter. The, and uh, this is the bolt gun, the bolter that the Space Marine is holding, which I've thought of for a while and I think that having a uniform kind of color scheme for your bolters is the best way to go. I've seen different um, different chapters or different pictures of painters who've painted their bolt guns in uh, different colors and uh, although I think that that is that's an option uh, for example I think that in the in the, the game right now, the most obvious example I can think of is the Dark Angels bolt guns all being red, uh, the casings being red, and I think also the, um, the Iron Hands Space Marines, their bolt guns are painted white. So, you know, it's interesting how they decided to do that, and, uh, you know, that's, that's up to them. But uh, for me, I think having a very consistent looking bolter is, is more interesting. And then let the, instead of changing the color of the bolt gun, let the chapter or the legion's characters come out in the paint scheme. So the salamanders were known as very, uh, they were known as very masterful art artisans and craftsmen and artists. So as we continue, we're going to keep that in mind with how we design our bolt gun. Uh, but moving on though, we're going to get back to the armor with Warpstone Glow. And Warpstone Glow is a, a brighter, more candy colored green. And I think it's, it's what's going to set your salamanders apart from any Dark Angels that your friends play. Or maybe that you even have. Dark Angels, you want them to stay dark and you want the armor to be very... Uh, very, I guess, very jade, dark jade colored, where the salamanders that you're going to be painting have more of a brighter, I wouldn't say cartoony, but it's uh, more of a, yeah, like a, a brighter color to it. 
and I'm sorry I'm not explaining it very well, but it's in my head I can I can totally see that the Dark Angels are meant to be almost drab, uh, but very serious and very grim because their green is supposed to represent the dark green of the forests of their homeworld Caliban before it was destroyed. Whereas the Salamanders, their armor uh, does not come, even their their entire uh, their their chapter's mentality and their personality is is not. Uh, so grim and so uh, so morose and so dark as the Dark Angels. So uh, we're visually going to show that distinction not only with the brighter green but with some uh, some fire and some flames and um, we're just gonna try to really pull this model away from the kind of the more serious almost monastic and a uh, stripped down dark angels who use their it's kind of like they almost uh, i don't want to compare it to any kind of religion but uh the dark angels are very almost i, I want to say almost fanatically religious in their iconography kind of like the black templars the black templars i want to say is probably the most out of the quote unquote good guys the most uh religious but dark angels definitely have that part in their aesthetic Whereas salamanders is their their decorations are more artistic, rather than uh, religious and strictly adhering to to the kind of uh, that kind of fanaticism. So you're gonna see individual like in in us in the same squad if you want, which is what I would do if I ever decided to get into salamanders as an army. I would paint each guy with different artistic flourishes to show um, his his artistry maybe not so much his his individuality it's not like there are a bunch of guys that say that oh I'm gonna look completely different from everybody else just because I want to show everyone that I'm not a I'm not a drone I'm an individual I, I have my own kind of style but um, because they are so creative with how they work their armor and they're creative in individual ways the Space Marines are going to decorate, they're going to up improve and uh, do artistic flourishes on their armor uh, just because they want to um, show off their uh, to themselves and improve themselves as artists and as artisans, as craftsmen to make their armor and their weapons not only uh, functional and, and as efficient as possible because they're always going to be tweaking it but also to um, make them look good. I read in the fluff also that because each salamander kind of maintains his his own equipment and kind of improves and makes it as optimal for him, I think for example a good example of that is uh, I read a story where where they were each encouraged to kind of strip and and rebuild their bolters to their specific individual uh, like their their requirements their spe specifications so one space marine one salamander who kind of finds himself always drawing to the left when he's aiming he'll kind of adjust his bolter to be very uh very useful and deadly and lethal in his own hands uh, and i think that's interesting that's one of the things that separates them from other chapters And um, as, as we continue to go, the Warpstone Glow as, as the final highlight color for your, your salamander for the armor in, in this first section, we wanted to uh, have smooth coverage. Warpstone Glow, it's, uh, it's a tricky paint to use by itself. For those of you who did not see the last video of uh, my how to paint the salamanders um, before that was completely kaput and gone, uh, you, you'll notice that when I tried painting Warpstone Glow all by itself, it just it spread too thin, it was, it was difficult to use as a highlight paint. Um, but when you use it as the second or third highlight, when you've already painted your base coat and painted on more than one layer, it actually looks pretty good when it dries. So here we go, the, the paint is dried a little bit, there's our model at this point. We're going to start doing the gold details next, which is uh, Balthazar Gold. And you'll notice also that I have decided to go with a helmeted 
figure. The Salamander is out of any Loyalist Space Marine chapter. Uh, some of you might remember this, or some of you are already aware of this. Their skin color is different, and like drastically different, and just their appearance is, is completely different. So, whereas most Space Marines, when they are uh, when they go through their, their transformation from human into superhuman with all the different uh, surgeries and, and implants and um, different things that they do to, to change physically the shape of a man into a space marine, they Im implant these, these, um, these organs into the bodies of their recruits. And uh, it's, it's sometimes because they're injected with their Primarchs DNA, their specific DNA, they have different reactions to it. For example, a Space Marine in the Raven Guard will have very pale skin. Um, his, his skin will turn pale no matter what it looked like before. Uh, it, usually they'll have dark hair anyways, but their hair will, will darken. Their, um, their complexion becomes very, you know, waxy and pale uh, no matter what they look like before. So that's just something that their, their Primark Corvus Corax, uh, in his DNA, had to adjust itself to uh, to live in the environment that he was in. So, so all these years later, as they uh, continue to implant their recruits with these organs that have been um, enhanced by their Primark and their Primark's DNA, they, they will absorb that information into their bodies and then it affects their appearance. With the Salamanders, their Primark whose name was Vulcan, Volk, Vulcan, Vulcan. Um, he, he was raised uh, when he was a baby and was scattered to the four winds with all the other Primarchs. He was scattered to a volcanic planet that was super high in radiation. Humans had lived there and they had kind of eked out a sort of very miserable existence before he came there. And uh, as he grew up there, in order to adapt to his surroundings, what his skin did was it, it um, naturally darkened because of the radiation. And so uh, that's why in all of the, the fiction and all the texts, uh, his skin is coal black. Not even dark brown, but like jet onyx black black, just like this guy's shoulder blades. With almost uh, no colorization to it, except completely black in order to absorb the uh, radiation and not be put in danger of it and in, in order to uh, be functional on this planet that he found himself on. So that's one of the things that all of the humans that found these Primarchs were just so amazed at because they had superhuman intelligence and strength from a very young age and uh, their bodies naturally adapted to suit the environments that they were in. And while I've been rambling, uh, the things that we colored with gold were the insignias on the bolters. I decided to go with gold helmet, a gold helmet for this guy, so he could represent a sergeant, uh, he could represent a veteran, if you've got a veteran squad, but uh, I, I like the the gold helmet in general. I might, I might say, you know, you could have a whole army of these guys, but um, if you're going for just a regular line tactical squad or just a regular guy with a bolter that doesn't have anything special, then I'd say, you know, stick with the green helmet. I'm also going to do gold rims on the shoulder, plaid, shoulder pads and you're going to notice that uh, most of the artwork or most pictures of salamanders have them with black shoulder pads and green rims. So I found through the years painting these models that uh, when you're painting a space marine, one of the reasons why I didn't initially want to collect or paint space marines at all I was so I was so against it was because I thought that their uh, their colors were so boring you have to paint an entire army with pretty much the same basic color and uh, having come from playing fantasy with orcs and goblins and uh, armies where everything had could have individual kind of colors and and just just a different look I thought that the uniformed regimented um, uh, the exact carbon copied paint scheme from one figure to the next was just kind of boring. So uh, by finding little flourishes like this I was able to get over that. And you can too if you decide you want to go that extra 
uh, take that extra step. Give each figure in your army something different. Uh, another thing, a lot of people don't like this. I, I haven't done it for this figure, but I usually like to glue on, if it's a model that I'm personally collecting, I usually like to glue on patches, or uh, pouches rather, and ammo pouches, grenades. You know, I don't mind including that on the figures that I collect. Oh, sorry, it's kind of blurry here. The autofocus needed to take time. And uh, you'll notice here, I didn't, I wasn't really paying attention to it, but my, my brush is, the brush tip of the brush that I'm using is, it's pretty trashed already. It's, it's had it, and um, what that is doing, which I, I can't really see it from the angle that I'm painting, is it's putting red into the, or it's putting gold into the black of the shoulder pad. So that's something I cleaned up between videos. In this next section, we're going to get to the lead belcher, which is the silver paint we use. And so for this, there's not too much silver on this figure. It's the barrel and the uh, metallic underside of the bolter. For example, the, uh, the clip right under the black casing, uh, the slide right there, and um, the back part of the bolter. right by the, the trigger and the grip. And also in the back of the Space Marine on his backpack at the bottom, the bottom vents, the four vents. I also painted, you'll notice, right by the the gloves, the um, like the bracelet part of the of the arm armor. I painted that in gold as well. And here we are, moving to the four vents that stick out at the bottom. I'm on this uh, coconut water, gluten-free, wheat-free kind of diet now. My lady boss has put me on it and uh, it's, my body's still flushing out all the junk that's been accumulating inside of it. It's like a two-week thing and um, oh boy. Uh, this guy, this particular Space Marine, has a in his backpack a silver skull framed by with like a little arch. So I decided to paint that the silver skull in silver, or the skull in the middle in silver rather, and leaving the arch in gold. Okay, I had uh, to pause the video for a second to take a look at what color the eye lenses are going to be for any. Salamander's model, you're going to use green, uh, even if you're going to use green for the helmet, you're going to use red for the eye lenses. So I decided to go dark with corn red. Now when I'm painting my eye lenses, I always like to hold the model upside down because they have these brow ridges that, that jut out over the over their um, over their eyes, over the eye lenses. So turning them over will save you from having to repaint over the brows. Uh, any any part that you that you paint too uh, too much with the red. I also did a silver grill in the helmet. And now we're going to go into the shades, which is the last part of the video. So we're starting with Raiklin flesh shade, and this is going to go over all of your gold. Raiklin flesh shade is just one of the options for shading gold. Another one, if you want it to be a little bit darker, if this were a, a Dark Angels Space Marine, I would use Agrax Earthshade, which is the dark brown shade, and that is going to really tone down the gold overall. 
You can also use Seraphim Sepia, which is, uh, I think, interchangeable with Raiklin Flesh Shade. Either of these is going to give it a nice, I don't want to say coppery, but a nice reddish tinge that you can highlight the gold back up very nicely after it's dried. So either Raiklin Flesh Shade or Seraphim Sepia is a great shade for your golds. The next color we're going to use is Known Oil. Known Oil is going to be used to shade the silver parts, so specifically the bolter and the vents. Now with all shades, you want to make sure before you move on to the next shade that you carefully examine each area of where you're putting on the shade. Like after I painted the vents here, you see that I wanted to go and uh, paint some of that known oil into the uh, the vents on the, on the actual backpack itself. You want to make sure that the shade is not pooling anywhere. It's not getting... Uh, um, What's the word? It's not becoming a puddle. It's not puddling anywhere on the model, especially because Space Marines have lots of flat areas. If your shade pools or puddles in one specific area, it's going to create this ugly, ugly looking um, shadow when it dries, and it's going to be very difficult to paint over it. So you want to just make sure you spread your shading out. Uh, you definitely don't want to get it into areas of the model that you um, have painted a different color. So you wanna keep the green BL10 out of the silver areas. You wanna definitely keep it out of the gold areas. Uh, even you wanna try to keep it out of the black parts like the, the rubber uh, webbing in between the armor plates. You, you wanna try to keep it out of there. But a BL10 green is a nice brighter green shade and it'll make a very nice looking emerald um, green finish. Another option would be to use Coelia green uh, shade but that I think would be more for your your dark angels which is uh, gonna have a darker finish. And there you go we're gonna let this guy dry and then we're gonna come back to it thanks for watching don't forget to check out my website www.warbosstastestudios.com to commission me for a paint job today and email me at warbosstastestudios at gmail.com thanks for watching everybody laters <laughs>